Well, two years ago in August, we had a disgruntled gentleman, about 19 or 20, uh, that uh, didn't make it through uh, um, uh, Air Force training in Colorado. And he came back home and was somewhat despondent. So one morning he decided to get up about 6, 6.30, and then disfigure all of, and put graffiti all the way around the building, paint-wise, where it's not brick part. It's kind of like a, a solid, um, uh, uh, softer uh, 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 panel, excuse me, um, uh, cement all the way around yeah. before you get to the brick. So he put all this graffiti on it. Then he came in through the door, and then, you know, all our uh, doors have tempered glass, so he broke the glass door, opened up the building, went in came up here and then tried to figure out how to come up here to the balcony to go up into the uh, bell tower, the clock tower. He went through the one door, broke that window, went through the other door, broke that window, broke, went through this door, broke that window, finally figured out that it was the door here. Came up here, went all the way up to the uh, clock tower, mm -hmm. disfigured or broke the hands on three of the four clocks, caused over $6,000 worth of damage. Okay, in the meantime, the emergency uh, alarm went out and it says courthouse. The police station is a block and a half away. So of course they went to the regular courthouse. Could not see any problems there, couldn't figure out what was going on. So as they were driving back, coming through here, one of the policemen noticed that there was graffiti there went out to investigate. In the meantime, our gentleman had gone up, got tired of disfiguring all of the uh, clock faces, went out through the door, and went over to the ledge, and a after some pondering, decided he was gonna jump. Now the problem is, the way our building is, it's like this, okay? So when he jumped, he landed 10, 12 feet down and hit another uh, crevice or, you know, uh, side part. Waited a few more minutes, got enough gumption, jumped again, did the same thing again. Finally decided he was too dizzy and so forth, so he just sat on the edge. And that's when the police finally realized he was just sitting there. They had to take one of the cherry pickers finally to come up and take him down and put him away. Uh, he was found that uh, in court that uh, he needed to go for psychiatric treatment. But it was like $6,000 worth of uh, damage just to the windows and, and to the doors wow. uh, that cost us on that, but we took care of it. But why he picked the courthouse, we're still not quite sure. But that's what he did, and, and he we made national courthouse. news. Just another crazy person. You got it. <laughs> so courthouse, Put down. So if you look at this photograph right here, you see a gas station right there. That is that gas station right there. So her and Elvis are standing right here on this balcony. You can see there's two posts there, and you can see the two posts behind it. Now let's flip over here, and that's her and Elvis. And so they are indeed standing right here. They came through this door, which is in the back of the courtroom. So if you go through there, you can see the courtroom is right inside there. And they are literally right here. And so you can see her. And this is the entrance to the courthouse. You can see this courthouse square. There is the movie theater that they went to uh, at some point. And when I say they, I'm talking about Elvis and his guys. They went there. So it is the one that is that you can see that from. So if you're standing out here, just know that all this was filmed right here with this coast guard. Right Have right here, friends. So friends, this is the courtroom. Of course, we gotta go up 
here and see what it looked like from the judge's perspective. A lot of cool pictures here. But this is what it looked like from the judge's perspective, looking out into the crowd. It happened literally right here. It's not kind of right here. This is the spot. And this was shot in August. They say it was really hot. It's actually nice and comfortable in here right now. Indeed it is. So in one of the scenes, you see the judge from this angle, and he's talking to the attorneys of the prosecution, which is over here, which actually it was really more of a hearing than it was a trial. And she's telling him that they're living in a place where it's not appropriate for kids. While that's happening, you see Elvis right here, and he leans over and he passes a chocolate bar to a person here that passes it to a person, passes it to a person that passes it across the aisle and hands it to the children that are right there, the two little boys. And they were sitting in seats. You can actually see on the floor where the seats were. So they were sitting in these seats. You can see where the holes are. So that seat was there. And this right here is where the other seat was. So they passed the candy bar across to the two little boys that were right there. Happened right here. So the table that Elvis and the father and the girl were sitting at was right here. And the little boys right there. Happened right in here, friends. So friends, in this next scene I'm gonna show you, Elvis is standing like right here, talking to the judge, he's sitting here you can see that door, you can see that door, the lady standing over here, and he's standing right here. And the judge asked him, did she ever try to kiss you? And he says, yes, sir. And she says, he's lying. She was lying, friends. All right. So there it is. We're going to look for some more stuff. Stay tuned. It looked like this, friends. You know, this was here later. They changed it and covered the floor up, put shag carpet in, believe it or not. And all those kinds of things. 
That's a wooden clock face from the clock tower from back in the day. So there's also a museum in here, if you get a chance to come. This is from that day outside filming. You can see the 55 Caddy. Over right here. And you can see there's Elvis in that courtroom that we were just in. So if you get a chance to come here, definitely come here and check it out. Old Courthouse Heritage Museum. Very nice place. I was going to ask you something. Um, if I send you a little blurb about the museum, do you think you might be able to use it? You know, sure. You know, mm -hmm. about the b building in yeah. general, yada, yada. Yeah. I have just a little, you know, a blurb. Yeah, if you'll do that, and I will. I'll add it to the video. And okay, so, Because what I'm trying to do is, you know, y'all allow me to come do stuff like this. Yes. So in exchange, yes. I'll have people that will come here. Okay, yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a nice win. exchange for Yes, it us. is. It's you a win-win. Yeah. And um, partnerships are really important to us it because works. we have no money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the well, I have um, almost, I've got 24,000 subscribers on one channel. I have uh, 4,000 on another. Right, right. And they're all hardcore Elvis fans. Yes, so yeah. they want to go everywhere Elvis yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like I tell the kids when we um, do... Uh, you know, teach about archives and yeah. primary and secondary sources, and they go into the vault. Yeah. And, um, and of course, uh, I say, where else do you know that you would see a vault? And they say, the bank. Well, I said, don't, don't look for money here. We have no money. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, it. but you can do a great things with, um, you know, partnerships. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I told um, a granting agency one time, we might not be, we may be small, but we're mighty. That's right. That's right. Well, it's a really nice place. It's uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you. And people you. will love to come here. Yeah. Oh, great. Great, great to see great. you. So you. you've got my information. Yes. Send me, yeah, send me stuff. Okay. Thank you. Yes, okay. ma'am. Appreciate you. So make sure you come here and support them, friends. I'm not sure which way. This says museum entrance this way. I gotta go to Lori some lunch. As you see, it's definitely this side. I think it's this side. So I'm gonna do a picture lineup right here. Stay tuned. Friends, if you look right here at this picture, you see there's the 55 Caddy Limo, and it was parked right here. You may ask how I know that it was parked right there. I'll show you how I know. Look right there, do you notice the fire hydrant? Well, there it is. So now, look at the fire hydrant in the photo. There it is. So the 55 limo at one time, right here. So there it is, friends. Just another piece of Elvis history. I wonder what this is. 
they're escorting them all over town. Fernando County. I wonder who it is. Must be Brad Paisley or something. That was a shout out to Adam the Woo. So friends, while Elvis was staying here, he went to Wikiwachi. You see right there and watched a mermaid show. So we're going to try to go check that out. Stay tuned. So these guys are coming back from the hurricane areas, I would assume. There's a whole line of them. And I'm going, they may be going. I don't know which direction I'm going, you can see. 19. I'm going south, so they're headed north. So there's the answer. So they're actually heading into the hurricane areas. You can see my south right there. It's weird, friends, not know where I'm at, but I don't. If it wasn't for GPS, I'd be l -l lost. So friends, when you leave Crystal Springs, or Crystal Lake, Crystal River, I'm sorry, I keep calling it Crystal Springs. When you leave Crystal River, you turn to your left at the big intersection and stay on that road. This is literally right on that road, Wikiwaki. It's literally on the main road. So I'm gonna go talk to these fine folks and see if I can film and see what's going on. Stay tuned. Very cool. Thank you so much. All right, so here we go, friends. So they're saying that the normal ticket is 13. And so we're gonna go in here and check this out. And I'm gonna stop. So the mermaid show is at three o'clock, so that's what we're trying to get to. And they say that there's a boat ride as well. So we'll see about that. So saying the mermaid show is this way. So this is what the mermaid theater looks like. And they've got slides and look at this. Wow, look at that. Don't you know I would love to swim down there in that? Gorgeous. So this is the where the mermaid show happens at. And Elvis was here and watched the mermaid show just like it was back in the day.
watch the mermaids right in here. Gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Wikiwachi Springs State Park, the only city of real live mermaids. For your own safety, we ask that you please remain seated throughout the entire show. You are welcome to take photographs, but please do not use a flash. The light will simply reflect off the thick windows in front of you and sadly spoil your shot. As a reminder, there are no food or drinks permitted in the underwater theater. Thank you. If you're interested in a photo opportunity with a world famous Wikiwachi mermaid, there will be a posing after our show located at the Mermaid Lagoon. For your own safety, we ask that you please not sit or stand on any of the steps in our theater. This is a fire marshal regulation as well. The mermaids can hear your applause, and like any other performer, they absolutely love it. Now, my name is Mermaid Amanda, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the history of Wikiwachi. Then I'll be turning over to the mermaids for their show, Fish Tales. Wikiwachi, live mermaids. You may not know this, but Wikiwachi was opened over 70 years ago in 1947 by Newton Perry. Perry was a former Navy frogman, which today is the equivalent to a Navy SEAL. He helped invent the air hose breathing method that we still use underwater today. He also had the dream of seeing mermaids swim in this very spring, and every day we keep his dream alive. Now this theater that you're all sitting in that holds up to 400 people, was built in Clearwater, Florida in three separate parts and sent to Wikiwachi and submerged into the spring. A team of expert divers helped secure the theater and pump all of the water out. Originally, underwater shows were short skits consisting of girls doing ballet rather than swimming in mermaid tails like you will see today. Throughout the years, there have been an array of shows including Peter Pan, Mermaids on the Moon, Alice in Waterland, and The Wizard of Oz. If you came to Wikiwachi Springs in the early 60s or 70s, it was very likely that you might have run into a celebrity such as Elvis Presley, Don Knotts, or Esther Williams, just to name a few of the stars spotted back then. Now before US 19 and State Road 50 were major roads, the girls would actually stand on the side of the road in their bathing suits and wave guests into the park. Even if they just got one guest, they performed their show giving it their all. Now that all of you visit Wikiwachi on your own today, we no longer have to do this. To show our appreciation, the mermaids would like to present Fish Tales. Let's set them off with a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. We're glad you came to Wikiwachi. Glad you came to Wikiwachi. I said that already. We know. We're so glad you made the trip. We're so glad you made the trip. Come on, I said that already. Hey, give us a break. Wait a minute, you've got to be pulling my leg. You say you're... <laughs> what? Mermaid, silly, you know. Squishy tail, pretty face, lots of charm, lots of grace. We're the gals who suck a thousand ships when they see us. surface 
of one of the deepest and clearest springs in the world. Water temperature is 74.2 degrees, winter and summer. Now that may sound warm, but remember, it's 24 degrees below body temperature. The Wikiwachi mermaids have learned to be in complete harmony with their underwater surroundings. Watch as the spring's permanent residents, the fish, eat right from their hands. I wish, I wish I were a fish. I wish, I wish, I wish I were a fish. In order to perform complicated ballets underwater, all of our mermaids must learn to rise, descend, or remain motionless at any level, all without the use of weights. It works like this. When a mermaid wants to rise, she takes a deep breath of air, and up she goes. To descend, she simply exhales, and as her body becomes dead weight, down she goes. And if she takes in just the right amount of air, she can pause in midwater. Thanks for the demonstration, mermaids. Basement, please. So after the show is over, they come to the window like that so you can go get your photograph made with them. So this is where the floor was. The original seats were like this, and they were right here. You can see that the stage is covering them now. So Elvis would have been in the middle seat, right here. It had been right there. That is the window that he would have been looking out of right there. So he was standing right there. And that's what it looked like back in the day. So friends, Elvis would have sat dead middle right here. This is the center, center pane. So that's what it would have looked like down there for him. And he would have stood, he stood right here in this pane because his seat would have been literally right here, dead in the center. So he would have been able to see all the way down in there like that right there. So this is it. He was right here. Just like that. Amazing. Very cool. So friends, here's some photos of Elvis at Wikiwachi. And I looked around for these buildings, trying to line it up, and this stuff is long gone, unfortunately. And this is Elvis and Ann Helm sitting on the front row, and you can see uh, Vernon and Dee as well. And don't you know that the Colonel was actually there? You see the Colonel there with Elvis, and they're standing right in the front, and people there gawking at him. Pretty cool stuff, I'd say. And then here's Elvis talking to the mermaids. I wonder what he is whispering in her ear. There is no telling. <laughs> It's just beautiful down in there. It's 
possible there's the show it's possible this was the other building that you see in the background but they've all changed they all have these tall roofs on them and stuff now so i don't find anything here that looks like the original there's one of the mermaids and there's a person out messing with plants just because it's what they do so come check out the mermaid show friends wasn't that expensive to get in wasn't that big a deal Very cool and sounds very cool. It's got doorknobs on the doors. We got a march. Elvis came here and ate. It's called Coney Island Drive-In. So we're going to stop in here, take a little look-see. Well, naturally, every vehicle here is trying to get out all at the same time. Are y'all really that bad at driving? Get off the phone, that's part of the problem. Good Lord, you people with the telephones. All right, let's go see what's going on. So friends, you can see the sign right there says, eat where Elvis ate, right there. So let's go in and check it out. Stay tuned. They have old cars. It's like a pretty cool place. You're the owner? Yes. All right, and this is Coney Island. Coney Island Drive. -in. Been here since 1960. 1960. Elvis would have been here in 61. They filmed Please. the movie in 1961, right, and that. the story I was told is that there was uh, two black Cadillacs pulled in one afternoon. And six young men got out of them and came in to eat lunch, and one of them was Elvis. And they sat back there in the corner and had hot dogs and milkshakes. And, and there was a, a story told that he was back again during the filming of the movie, but I didn't talk to the people that were here then. The lady that told that story was the wife or the mother of the ex-fire chief of Brooksville. And he's the one that told me that story, that his mother worked here as a teenager and that uh, Elvis, Elvis, she was here the day Elvis came out. And she had a photograph. Is, is she the one that had the only photograph? He said she had a, she had a photograph when he was here, but that uh, ironically, their house burned down. They lived just north of town. What are the odds? Yeah, so, but that's the only time I ever heard of anybody even having that's a photograph. photograph. And he was out here uh, putting out a fire in my RV is how I met him, and he told, really? we got in a conversation and told me this story. So, but we feel pretty confident he was here at least once. Well, you know, the history of the place the, has been since then that the Elvis ate here. very beginning. Right. And there weren't a lot of places. If you think about 1961 in this area, there were very, very limited places to eat. And this was a relatively new restaurant at the time. And it's like the, uh, the hotel that he stayed in. That was really one of the only ones around. Right. Yeah, there wasn't a lot to go and do and see, so I imagine if they got bored or had time to kill, they'd get out and go for a ride and find a place yeah. for a hot dog. hot dog. Yep. And all that kind of stuff. So yeah, they, very they, cool. they sure claim he was here, and we're going to stick to that we'll story as long as I own the place. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much. You bet. Appreciate and it. And I'll put the uh, information about how they get here and all that kind of stuff here. Okay. And I think this guy said it was the best hot dog he's ever had. Yeah. I'm retired military. And you who? I'm, I'm the spa guy. Okay. He's shooting the video. Uh, I've, in 70 years, I've never had a lunch like I had here today. It was fantastic, man. Yeah. Hell, a military in 25 years. 
didn't make a lunch like this. <laughs> <laughs> he said he'd been all over the world, and this yeah. is about the best he ever ate. I'm, re you. I'm retired, General, U.S. Supreme Court. Yes, sir. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You Y'all have a great day. Appreciate you, my friend. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, friends, this is it. They said that they ate in the back corner, which I don't know if this would have been the back corner. This looks like this would have been part of the restaurant at the time, but it may not have been this part. It may have been this corner right here. But you can see they embrace their Elvis. And it looks like a really, really nice place. And this was probably the price in the back at that time. And so there you go. Just another place related to Elvis. This is All Roads Lead to Pony Island Drive. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Have a nice day. Yes. So friends, I had to voice over this part of it because they had so much background music playing. Very nice guy. He wanted me to come out here and take a look at this Ford pickup truck. All original. Nah, just kidding. This was not original right here. Uh, that is a beautiful engine, if you will. Very well done. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Better than it was the day it was new. Coney Island Drive-In. You got to go check it out. It was really good. So this is at the corner of East Jefferson and East Early Street in Brooksville, Florida. Right here. So friends, I'm headed back to Crystal River, and it's about from the hot dog place from Coney Island, it's about 40, 40 minutes roughly. So that was a pretty good ways back then, but you know what, like he said, there wasn't many places to get food back then. So they would have ventured out to find something a little different. And you know how Elvis loved junk food, and I do too. Hot dogs are awesome. The 70 year old man said the best he's ever had, he's been to all over the world and the two goat ropings. Friends, this is not stuff that you see every day. Especially that. Let me give you a little zoom in on that. And then how about that? Get your gander of that. A big shark hung up up there. So in Florida, friends, no helmet law. Not even on the bunny. Actually, it was Wile E. Coyote. So friends, this is Crystal River Middle School now. It used to be high school. The scenes that are in Follow That Dream where they are in the gangster's hideout were shot in this gymnasium right here. You could see it's a middle school, the home of the Bearcats. But the inside of that building or cat, it was kind of like a, a shack that they had built for the gangsters there that was next door to the house that uh, Elvis and his family were staying in was built and shot inside of this gymnasium right here. Right there, friends. Unfortunately, the school is closed and, but you know what, it looks like the fence is open. I'm gonna go to that side and look in there. Stay tuned. It's so funny. I see this gate chain right here, and I think that it, the thing is chained up and locked up where I can't get in there. And then I look down here, and it's just wide open. <laughs> so wow. So the answer is we can walk up and look in. But of course, you're not gonna recognize anything. This is just a gymnasium. But this is where they shot the movie. In August would have been, school would have been out, I would assume. 
um, here. I can't remember the school dates, but there is what it looks like inside. I hope you could see a little something in there. Go to this side. It was filmed inside that gymnasium right there. So a lot of the scenes from the movie were actually shot right inside that room right there. So as you can imagine, they got it all set up in here, built all the sets, and got her ready to go. And it happened right inside of here, and I bet you they even shot a little b-ball. You never can tell. I bet you they even shot just a little bit of the b-ball. Yes, indeed. So I'll look for some photographs of them around here, but I bet you a lot of this shooting happened at night. Be cooler at night. You know how Elvis was. He wanted to be out at night. But it happened right here, friends. Follow that dream. A lot of the movie sequences were filmed in this gymnasium. So friends, I'm headed up Highway 19. That is West Dunlin Road. This is 19 and 98 North. And this next intersection right here to the right is where on the movie they made a right turn and the road was blocked. And if you remember it, It happened right here. Let's get out and take a look. Stay tuned. So this is North Basswood in Suncoast Boulevard. And this is where they came off and came here. And you can even see that the color of this road is different than the color of that road. And this looks like this could be a very dangerous little spot. In this photograph, they are sitting off the side of the road and of course, that road was not a four lane at the time. It is now. So I would assume that the road on this side would be the original road. And this was all very treed, but there was a sign. You can see there's a sign right over there. So if you look where this comes off and curves, it may be that the other side was the original road. I'm gonna cross over. See if we can see any signs of the I'll show you. You can see that sign right there, the billboard. And the billboard would have been you know, it's been 57 years ago, so it's not likely that any of it was here, especially if it changed as much as it did. That's what it looks like today. And we don't know that that sign was even put in the ground. It could have just been freestanding sitting there, made to look like it was in the ground. Looks pretty close to the road. I think that sign would have been somewhere in here. And I'll have to go back and watch the actual scenes. But maybe the sign was somewhere like right here so you could come around the corner and see it. This is also the spot where Elvis is lifting the car over the log. So the log had fallen over the road. And if you see these little, little things where they've taken the road and filled it in, and you can see how the road breaks up like that and every now and again, they'll just seal it. They'll seal those cracks. Of course, by this, we can't tell where this is at because there's nothing in the background that shows you anything about the exact spot. But that scene happened somewhere right in here. 
and I would say that um, you know what I'm gonna pull up the uh, the see if I can watch the video see if I can get some more clarity stay tuned another thing that happened here at this intersection is a trooper passed away so I'll show you the same intersection the trooper Ronald Gordon Smith site December 23rd 1973 he was killed in the line of duty at this location was attempting to apprehend two escaped felons from Oklahoma and even though mortally wounded was able to return fire the gunshots attracted the attention of nearby hunters who held the felons in custody until the arrival of the authorities this was erected in 2010 so in 1961 a movie was filmed here in 1973 this man gave all he lost his life here in a shootout with bad guys all here at this same little intersection and there's some stuff back here oh these are people that are donating to the upkeep of this I would think and there's also some stuff back here let's walk back here and take a look Says this tree planted in memory of Trooper Ronald Gordon Smith, who was killed at this site, December 23rd, 1973. So I'm wondering if it was actually, if he was killed here, like in the woods here. It seems that maybe they're marking this actual spot back here, like he went in the woods. But you know what? We don't know what went on. Interesting. A blessing. This family. So they would have turned right in, went right down that road. Another interesting little tidbit is in the movie, they make this turn. There's a log across the road. They jump the log because this road is said to be blocked off and not in use at the time for the state until it's open, until it's uh, ready to be open. So they go down there and that's where they homestead at. The reality is, is you stay on this road and it's many miles that way. Hollywood magic. So in the movie, you also see a dirt road going across there. They came and made a turn right here and somewhere, probably about where that blue sign is right there, there was a a gate like with the telephone pole on either side and an arch right here that's where they jumped the log at so it was right there in that neighborhood and this is what it looks like today and i bet you wondered how he lifted that car off of that log your answer is right here you see this steel lever right here to the left that's what lifted the car and then they photographed him from the waist up like in the old days Kind of does that in Florida a lot, doesn't he, friends? You gotta follow that dream wherever that dream may lead. You gotta follow that dream to find the love you need. When your heart gets restless, time to move along. When your heart gets weary, time to sing a song. This is the city of Inglis. So up Highway 19, come to CR 40, County Road 40, Levy County, and you see right there it says, follow that dream partway. So you turn to the left, and this right here is where Elvis followed that dream. This is the road. So we're going to turn left right here, friends. We're going to go down and take a little look-see. Stay tuned. Let me 
July and August of 1961. They really embrace it here. Elvis Presley filmed his ninth major motion picture, Follow That Dream. Several locations in this area were utilized, the majority of the scenes being shot just a few miles ahead at Bird Creek Bridge. So let's go check it out, friends. Friend of mine, Steve Kelly, is the man in the middle that is holding the plaque that you see. He it was instrumental in getting this named Follow That Dream Highway. He said that in the photo presenting, he's presenting to the mayor, the county commissioner, the plaque for the city hall and the county courthouse. And then it's him along with the mayor and the commissioner would do the ribbon cutting for the highway. And he said left to right is the mayor, the commissioner, me, one of the guys that was a stand-in for Teddy and Eddie, Pam and Pat Ogle that played the little girl in the movie, and the other stand-in for the twin boys as you go left to right. So he was instrumental in getting this done, and it is now, in fact, called Follow That Dream Parkway. I hope to be able to get Steve to tell his part of this story, but he's been sick lately, and we've not been able to film. Thank you, Steve Kelly, for getting that done. And I think there was other people that were involved, but clearly Steve was involved. You can see that he did the ribbon cutting right here. Follow that dream partway, friends, in honor of Elvis. So they would travel down this road from Highway 19. Highway 19 is where the marina was, is, I mean, where the hotel with the marina are. Not was, but are. It's right off of that highway. And this is just out a little distance, not a long, long ways. It's actually pretty easy to get to. Right, I'm going to turn around. So I was actually coming from that way. I turned around. You need to turn right on Hammock Road. And if you want to see this particular spot, there's a house that they were filmed on the porch of quite a bit. And that house is right down here. Let's take a look. And they say it still looks very much like it did back then. even the white picket fence. We pass Gladys Road on the right, believe it or not. All right, we took a little detour. So we're back on the road from the car wash. We're staying straight on 40. And we're headed down here. This is historic Cracker Town. Or some people would say Cracker. They're saying English, but you see that school says Yankee Town School. You go past Yankee Town School. follow that dream parkway but see Yankee Town would not embrace it so you see the sign stops right there the reason the well you heard the reason the lady said Yankee Town would not embrace it because their mayor thought that Elvis being on drugs was a negative thing what he doesn't realize is yes Elvis was on drugs but it's Elvis man Get your head out in your butt. What are you, Mayor McCheese? Do you realize how many people will come to your town just to see this stuff? And will stay in rooms here and buy groceries and gas and eat? Wow, will they?
And really, if we want to go with what it should be, it should be the Yankee Town, right? Y'all know what I mean. Keeping it clean for the kitties. So Elvis would have come down this road with the Memphis Mafia and all of the crews, all of the people that it would take to make this motion picture. Elvis's ninth, as you saw. And there's a spa right there for the spa guy. Somebody's got a Fiero sitting up on top of the trailer back there. It's further than I thought it would be. But now we're getting closer to the water, I believe, where we're, where we're headed. It says we're headed south. None of this is how I imagined it, and I'm sure it's the same way with you. That is why the spa guy comes and does stuff like this, because I want to see what it actually looked like. Not just my imagination, because my imagination doesn't think it looks like this. You see, we're getting to the marshes. And that's not where Martians live, you, all you people that believe in UFOs. This is kind of a long highway. Old school highway, you know, now modern day and even back then, you started having four lanes and that kind of stuff. But now, there's a lot more four lanes around than there used to be. And you know what's happened out here in the swamps in Florida? These people go to the pet store and buy a ball of python, get tired of it, and take it and let it go in the swamp. Well, now, they've got a problem with those kinds of snakes that are not meant to be here overtaking the Everglades and the swamp areas. So I just don't want to run into that because I ain't a snake guy. I, don't, I am anti that, as it were. But we're gonna fly the glory over this thing as well so we can really get a good look at it. Because I want to know what it looks like for sure all the way around out on the water side and that lady kept talking about salt something Let's see there's water we're coming up on water but this is by a bridge so we're looking for a pretty a pretty prominent bridge looks like it's coming up So friends, I believe there is an excellent possibility that this is in fact our spot. But that lady seemed to think that it was not on this side of the water, it was on the other side of the water. So we're going to see. I believe that it was in fact right here. And she was making a case that it was over there. But I believe that it was right here. So we're going to get out 
and take a little look around. Stay tuned.